The following is a presentation of the Matt Talk Podcast Network. The mind of Pat Popolizio is a wondrous thing. And for you pack wrestling fans, you'll get to go inside the mind of the skip each and every episode here on the Pack Mentality Poppins Podcast. Now, here's your host, NC State Director of Athletics Digital Communications, Ryan Reinhardt. Hey, NC State Wrestling fans, thanks for listening to a brand new episode of the Pack Mentality Pop-Ins, where we talk all things NC State Wrestling. I'm your host, Brian Reinhardt. I'm the Director of Athletics Digital Communications here at NC State and the Communications for- Director for the Wolfpack Wrestling Team. As always, I'm joined by the head coach of the Wolfpack, Pat Palpalizio. Ready to roll. Number three in the books. This one's exciting. We're going to be kind of previewing the Wolfpack for this year. No special guest or anything. We're just going to roll right into your lineup. So I hope you're ready. Yeah, no, it's a lot to talk about this week and excited about what some of the competitions we got coming up. Wolfpack fans, thanks for lending us your ears in this week's episode. If you missed any of our previous episodes, we strongly encourage you to go back into the archives and get all caught up. Before we dive into the new episode, we do ask that you go a little bit out of your way to help the Pack Mentality Poppins podcast. Help us make it as successful as we can by, first of all, hit that subscribe button, whether it's on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, Android, wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. Hit that subscription button and make sure you get to download the Pack Mentality Poppins podcast every time that we put on a new episode. Then... Head over to iTunes, hit that five-star rating, give it a review. It will help us out more than you can imagine. Do your part in leaving a rating and a review, and we will do our part to bring you the best content each time out. I'd like to give a special thank you to Barrister09, who not only gave us a five-star rating on iTunes, but wrote a great review. Pat, it feels good to hear that people are really liking this podcast. Yeah, no doubt. And uh, yeah, hats off to you for the hard work that you've been putting in behind this. I know there's a lot that goes on. Uh, it's going to continue to brand our program. More importantly, get the exposure of these guys in our program for all their hard work and commitment. So it's, it's definitely a positive things happening here. Great episode last time out. If you haven't listened, please go back in the archives. But you had your new assistant, Donnie Vincent, on. Talk about all NC State wrestling, why he came down to Raleigh. And I think our Wolfpack fans really got a good chance to meet him. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, Donnie's been a great addition to the program. He's uh, obviously had a big impact this weekend in the room all around recruiting, you name it. He's been uh, doing everything he needs to to fill his part and what we need within our program. We're still uh, we're working hard on his interview skills. Um, that'll come with time and experience as, uh, you know, that and, and his dressing after this weekend. We got some we'll, we can hit on that a little later. Well, we saw you both at the All-Star Classic. We were wondering where the ties were. We got the suit jackets, but no ties yet. So I guess that was an exhibition. Uh, yeah, exhibition and Sundays usually is, is no tie day. Speaking of that, All-Star Classic, great way for you guys to start the season. You had three seniors going up, Kevin Jack, Pete Renda, and Mike Machiavella was actually just invited up on Friday. Um, all three came back winners. How great was it for you guys that weekend up in Princeton? Oh, great way for these guys to kick off their season for one, as individuals, and then two, for our team. I think that just sets the tone for everything that we need to do this season. Um, and, it, you know, Machiavello got a late call. So for him to come in, make weight that week and uh, go out there and compete, I know that was uh, that's always good to see. Your athletes are ready to compete on call, last minute notice. And uh, I, I think that speaks volume for the kind of character that he has um but yeah great event and uh most importantly like you said coming back with three wins i thought that made a a really big statement for our program one other piece of news we're actually taping this before signing day so we can't talk about who you're signing but i do want to say this is going to be one of your bigger classes one that you guys are really excited about very, very excited about this class. Uh, you know, the two things I, I take from this is one, you always want to fill your needs, which I, I, 
I truly believe we've taken care of all our needs as far as what, what's going to happen down the road with the, the way our roster and weights and how things are going to play out. And then more than anything, I think all these guys fit the mentality and philosophy of what we wanted for our program. And I think that that's when you get some good things happening. Um, that's when you start seeing good results. Uh, combine that with the, one of the top recruiting classes in the country from two years ago. It's going to be a very good thing for our program. And in our first episode, we talked about practice. The second episode, we met a new assistant coach. And this past weekend, you guys not only went up to the All-Star Classic, which were exhibitions, unfortunately. So true people remember those results, but they're not going into the rankings. Yeah, I, you know, I, I think it's it's one of those where you get some personal satisfaction out of it. You can fine tune some things, but... I guess at the end of the day, people still are going to judge on on those results. But I I, I think the biggest takeaway is that they can't use those matches for seeding at the NCAA tournament. So, you know, we, we just went up there to compete and get ourselves better, and and I felt like we uh, we left there with that with that happening. You also had a handful of guys go up to the Hokie Open. Your red shirts. Um, how important is it for those guys? They Probably, you know, you always could pull a red shirt. You've done that over the last few years, unfortunately. But how important is it for your red shirts to get good results this whole season? Yeah, it's. I think it's key for red shirt, and you want to continue to improve. You want to put yourself in tough situations and environments, kind of testing the weight classes. You know, it, it's a time where you can move a kid up or down week to week, see where they're going to be their best. Uh, you know, it's more for them as individuals to continue to get better. And then ultimately, you know, we can piece the puzzles together for the following year. But that's kind of what we're doing right now is get everybody valuable experience and uh, continue to grow as a program and, and leave there with wins, as many wins as we can get. Now we're going to be moving on to the season. Uh, you guys are in action for the first time as a team this weekend, heading up to Troy, New York. Uh, Saturday, you guys will be at the Journeyman Duels. You got three duels that day. You got Ithaca, number 19, Oklahoma, in the Citadel. And then on Sunday, you're going to be staying up there and competing in the Journeyman Classic. So a lot of guys are going to get a lot of chances to see uh, have some action this weekend. A lot of wrestling going on in uh, the 518 area. Uh, brother puts on one of the best events in the country. He works extremely hard. It's not an easy thing to pull off, getting all these teams to come up there and compete. And then the second day is such a unique event. And I know it's a challenge on his part to kind of put all the pools together. But ultimately, I think we as a program get all our needs met. Um, we're going to be challenged, obviously, wrestling in Oklahoma and then Citadel, two, two programs uh, that that we need to be ready to compete against. And then Ithaca, you know, and they're one of the better Division three programs in the country, and, and that's why we're bringing a lot of guys up there to kind of get everybody what they need on that on that day as far as dual meets go. But uh, I know we need to be ready to compete. It's our first dual meet of the year. So, you know, a lot of guys are going to be, for the first time, stepping out, wrestling against competition from the outside. So that's that's always a, a challenge, not knowing what you're going to get. First time down the weight for some guys. Uh, we've been fortunate enough to send some guys to some tournaments, so it'll be a good early test on Saturday. Um, as far as Sunday goes, it's going to be a, a very unique format. Guys get put in the pools. Um wrestling out if you win i think you cross bracket over to the team or the the individuals that win that that next pool so it's it's fun to have you know it's not your typical open tournament where you're sitting there advancing in a bracket you know you're guaranteed anywhere between three and four matches depending on how many are in your pool and, and that's ultimately what we want this early in the year we want to make sure we're not over wrestled you know getting seven matches in a day or six you know with the new ncaa rules how many you can wrestle um and, and keeping that balance between good, tough, hard-nosed competition and, and not having, you know, you get in the national tournament, you're usually not wrestling more than three or four matches a day. So that's kind of the, the mentality that we want is go out there and get some really good high-level competition and then just get ourselves better. And Wolfpack fans, single tickets and, excuse me, Wolfpack fans, season tickets and single game tickets are now available. Help us fill Reynolds Coliseum each and every duel. Season tickets start at just $15 for youth and seniors and 30 for adults. To purchase your tickets, visit gopack.com slash buy tickets. And Pat, you guys were in Reynolds for the first time last year after the renovation. How important is it 
to have a packed Reynolds Coliseum for our home duels this year? Uh, it's a it's a big part of it, you know, and and I think you, you, talking about the season tickets, we definitely got to continue to grow our uh, numbers on that. You know, it's just over the last couple of years. I know it's the first time we've been able to sell season tickets, and it it definitely has an impact on our program. So that's a it's important we continue to grow those numbers. You know, if you if you can't make all the duels, you're at least we're going to do something special for our season ticket holders. Uh, we'll have an announcement on that at some point, but definitely want to cater to the people that are supporting our program. So the more people we can get to sell and, and buy our tickets, I think it helps with these guys going out there to compete. And uh, we're looking forward to some really big home duels, and we want to get that, that fan base loud and, and, and big in, in Reynolds. Again, Wolfpack fans, to purchase your tickets, visit gopack.com slash buy tickets. And Pat, now I think it's the time that everybody wants us to get to. We're going to break down your lineup. Uh, you have a lot of experience coming back, a big senior class, not, or excuse me, actually 10 NCAA qualifiers coming back. How excited are you for this group to get out there on the mats? Yeah, I can't wait to see the leadership and the experience uh, play out here. This is for the first time, you know, you look back from uh, year one being here at NC State. This is what we've been working towards is to get – that experience, guys that have uh, more than one senior on the team, I think that that's volume that that speaks volume for the leadership that we have, um, and that's going to come in and play a, a big factor in this year's success when we get in some tough environments. We're going to start at 125 pounds. Uh, redshirt junior Son Foz is there, yep. two-time NCAA qualifier. Last year he was just a win away from All American honors, ranked in the top ten in every major pull to start the year, but you also have Tommy Cox. Uh, he was pulled out of redshirt last year in December and started eight duels. So talk about the, um, what, what, what you see ahead for 125. I see, you know, both those guys are uh, continuing to improve. Obviously, Sean coming off a disappointing uh, match away from being an All-American last year it was a successful season, but I know his mentality is he wanted better than that, and I, that's made him more hungry this year. Um, and he's definitely made some adjustments technically, and he he will continue to get better and put himself in position for that. So I'm looking forward to that. And then, you know, we have Tommy Cox, who's worked extremely hard this off season to put some size on. He's done that. I think his confidence has grown because of it, and uh, he's got that tough, hard nosed attitude that that we're going to expect a lot out of him this year. And and between the two of them, we're going to be in a really good spot at 125 pounds. Uh, Starting the year off with Tommy Cox, and then as time goes on, Sean Falls will find his way back in in our lineup. Um, but in the meantime, I think they're both going to bring a lot of value to that to that weight class. Um, Hundred thirty three. It's going to be a different look this year. Um, basically, all the guys that are competing for that job, they weren't on your mat last year. They were all red shirting. So, could you break down one hundred thirty three for us? Yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to see who steps up and uh, takes that weight class. We had wrestle offs last week. Um, Jamel Morris came away. So, uh, I think if you if you ask a lot of people, I think you know maybe that wasn't expected. But in his mind, at talking to him, he said he's on a mission and he wants to to be the guy this year. He certainly showed it this last weekend. Um, but I know we have a lot of depth there and and guys that will challenge for that. I think this weekend, getting them all in the same weight class and uh, outside competition, it'll it'll definitely separate probably who's going to be the guy as we move forward but we got a lot of options there Tariq Wilson you know redshirted last year Will Clark it's going to come down to who can balance their weight uh on a one hour way in and then as as the season goes on is who's going to step up and really separate themselves from the rest of the pack 141 um really don't have to talk about this guy much but senior Kevin Jack is a two-time All-American starts the season number two in every poll but 141 is a very deep weight class. You have a two-time national champion in that weight class. But Kevin has put some high expectations on himself this year. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, that is very competitive across the, the entire weight class as far as depth goes. I like where Kevin's attitude is at right now. Everything he's doing right now is motivated to win a national title. Um, he knows what he needs to do. He's very mature this year and very driven. And I think that's the difference between the years past to this year is his outlook, his attitude, uh, very disciplined with his weight. Everybody thinks it's a, it's a, 
hard cut for him, but the kid is so disciplined outside the room that he keeps all that in check. And I think that's what makes him dangerous. He's he's a tough, challenging, unique style of wrestling, and as being as tall as he is for that weight class definitely throws people off. So I'm excited to see him continue to compete, and uh, our goal is to get him the toughest competition we can this year and, and face it. And I, I feel like our schedule has put Kevin in position for that to see a lot of the best guys in the country. Um, I would say 149, probably a lot like 133. You had in wrestle offs. You're going to have three or four guys looking to compete there each time out. We have senior uh, redshirt senior Bo Donahue, uh, redshirt junior Jamal Morris, who's moving up for 133, and redshirt junior Sam Malikin, who redshirted last year. So, what do you see out of those three at 149? Yeah, I, I definitely we have depth there again. Um, and it's I told the team the other day. I, I I'm looking forward to someone taking this this spot and uh, let them make the decision who our guy is. And that's what we're doing right now is to let these guys all compete, taking out uh, the coach's opinion on anything. I, I'm going to tell them all the time I'm going to kick my feet up in the stands and watch these guys wrestle it out. Um, but I trust whoever wins that weight class and takes over the starting spot is going to be ready to compete against anybody in the country. I like the growth and development uh, on everybody's aspect. Uh, Bo Donahue probably has... If you look at it, maybe the most experience at that weight class. So, you know, I think he's he's got that over those guys. But at the same time, um, Morris has valuable experience down at 33, put some size on growing into that weight class. And after watching Sam Leakey wrestle this weekend, it's it's no question he wants it. He's hungry. And uh, I think the competition is going to bring out the best guy at this weight class. And, and once these guys define who the starter is, it's going to make our team that much better, and uh, these guys will be in a good spot because of the competition they bring for each other. Uh, 157, you have another newcomer, redshirt freshman Hayden Hidley. He was a decorated recruit that redshirted last year, went 22-3 and as a redshirt, and in four of his tournaments, he won three of them. So what are you expecting out of Hayden this year? I expect big things as, as well as he does. Uh, he's a perfectionist, and he is very driven, very motivated, and – you know, he's he's done everything right to put himself in position to have a big year this year. And his work ethic is is what separates him from a lot of people. Um, but his mentality, I know he, he expects big things from himself. And that's something, you know, he's got to just continue to balance out. It's going to be a little bit of a process. It's his first time going through the the grind of the season. You know, red shirt is one thing, making weight every so often, but making weight back to back. And uh, he's got that discipline as well. And if you look at the people he's competed and beat last year, I, I feel like he's in a good spot um, from what people are expecting from the people that he beat. I think that just speaks volume of what he's uh, on track to do this year. Still got to go out and do it. But uh, I think people, when they come to watch NC State wrestling, are going to walk away and be extremely excited to see the what this kid can put on as far as a show and, and his mentality. It's, it's definitely going to be a, a fun fun weight class for us this year. 165, you have a returning starter, redshirt senior, Brian Hammond. Kind of an interesting story. His first two seasons here at NC State, he was at 149, took a redshirt year and worked his way up to 65 last year. NCAA qualifier and second in the ACC and going 21 and 13. And this year he finds himself right now ranked in the top 20 by both Intermat and Flow. So just how has the development of him has he been for you? Yeah, that's one of the guys that, you know, when I first got here, it was one of the guys that we recruited right away. Um, he has made some huge strides on and off the mat. You know, he's very driven in, in school and does well, very well academically. I think the maturity is what's made the biggest difference for him. Uh, he's made some huge mental gains on the mat. And uh, you watch Brian Hammond in our room. He is good as anybody that we have. And I think last year at the NCAA tournament was kind of his – his tournament where he, he gained a ton of confidence and all he has to do is just continue to be like that, that mentality that he has right now. Um, I think he's very dangerous. I think he's as good as anybody we have on our roster right now. And, you know, the thing with Brian is he's the one that has to know that, not us as coaches. And I know the guys on the team think that this is going to be a breakthrough season for Brian Hammond. And I'm extremely excited to see all his hard work uh, play out and go out and compete and make this happen. At 174, you have redshirt freshman Daniel Bullard. Uh, he was 
Obviously, he redshirted last season. He saw a lot of action at 65, a couple of tournaments at 74, but he was a top, he was another top 100 recruit from that 2006 class. Yeah, uh, a lot like his brother Thomas. Those guys are very hard-nosed, very scrappy. They can scramble. They're very good on top. So, you know, as the time went on this past season, uh, he was down at 65, started to grow out of the weight class a little bit. And as we projected of where we were going to need everybody, it made sense for him to bulk up. And he did a great job this offseason getting bigger, lifting. Um, expect big things from him. And, and I know he does, you know, both the Bullards. They're very competitive um, and, and they're going to be fun to watch. You, you know, they're the kind of wrestlers when you're always going to be on the edge of your seat because you're not, you, you don't know what they're going to throw at you. And that's what makes their wrestling exciting. And they're always in every match. And it's going to be, it's going to be a, a dog fight when they're out there wrestling. And the intensity that they bring is one thing that separates them and, and something that I respect a lot with those two guys, uh, especially this year getting uh, Daniel on the mat. I think it's going to be fun watching him wrestle 74. Uh, these next two weight classes, I'm going to kind of group together because in the offseason, you guys had a tough decision. Uh, you had two redshirt seniors here. I'm talking about Pete Renda and Mikey Machiavelli. Um, How did you decide who wrestles what weight this season? Uh, that was a pretty simple. Uh, brought these two guys in. Well, first of all, I butchered Mox last M- Machiavelli. Yeah, it's all, right. it's all right. It's all right. Um, we could do an edit redo on that one. Well, there is no, this is a one take shot. Unfortunately, right. we're good. Mock, mock, well, he'll understand. We call him mock, mock the mayor. Just See, go that's by that. I call him mock every day. To his yeah. Face, just say so. mock the mayor. We're, we'll be good. He'll dab you up. Don't worry. Um, no, it was one of those that at the end of the year, it was like, all right, which one of you guys wants to eat more than the other? And it was no brainer. Um, Machiavelli loves to eat. Uh, I think that's what, you know, something that it, He's uh, good at cooking, so he was like, hey, uh, this is easy. Uh, you know, we were in a situation, we knew we had two really good guys, and we, we couldn't afford to not have them both in the lineup. And we also had Malik McDonald. Both Everybody was itching to move up a little bit. I know it was a big cut on Malik last year. So we sat down, and, and you know, you always want to take care of individuals that are doing things right, and these guys are such great people that we needed to work this out. Um, and that's what makes our team special is these guys are all about the team. And we worked it out really easy just in a, in a little meeting. And everybody agreed that it would be best for them as individuals and for our team if they were able to move up. And they're so committed and hardworking that putting the weight and size on and doing it the right way wasn't going to be an issue. Um, and I'm very thankful of the way it worked out because they are. I mean, watching these guys train with each other in the room, I think they complement each other very well, at least uh, Pete and, and Mock, and then even Mock with Malik. You know, it, it's just been extremely valuable experience for them to train with each other, and they've uh, made each other better. And uh, I know they all expect big things this year, and they're gonna they're gonna take personal satisfaction in helping each other accomplish their goals. Uh, Pete Redshirt did last year. He was a 2016 All-American with a third-place finish. What did you see out of his redshirt season last year that will help him for his final campaign here? I think it was one of those, you know, anytime you get the redshirt later in your career, uh, like Tommy Gant did, like Nick Wisdowski did, it, it brings value almost to a perspective of when you can step back, slow things down, and analyze every situation and know that, you know, Every match, week to week, you're in it to get better, improve. You want to win and you want to dominate. But at the end of the day, you're doing it to get yourself to that next level when it comes time for the NCAA tournament. And I think that's something Pete realized. Um, he's very mature. I think he mentally matured a lot. And he realized his technique is pretty superior to a lot of the competition that he wrestles against. And, you know, he is. He's very physical and in shape and athletic. So... I think sometimes when you're in the stands watching some some of your competition compete, you can look at it and say, you know what, I, there's no question I'm better than this because of, you know, I, I was able to slow it down and, and pick apart some some things. And I think that's something he did and uh, brought some confidence this year. I think, you know, talking to him after the All-Star duel, he, he said he was a little bit hesitant because he took that year off on dual meets. And, and that's going to come with time. But... Like nothing, he'll be right back in the mix of things, uh, feeling his best as time goes on. But I, I can't wait as the season goes on to see his progression um, and his dominance. 
and mock last year. He really had a breakout year. Uh, he was one win away from All American at 184 last year. He's bumping up to 97 this year. Ranked in the top 10 in every major poll to start the season. So, how has his hard work helped you guys in the weight room this year? Uh, it's helped all around. You know, he defines when you look at what you need for work ethic commitment for a program, he defines it. And he's a great leader, very driven person. Uh, mock the mayor here on campus because of the kind of. Uh, his personality talking to everybody. But, yeah, I, I think he's driven. The, he's got a little bit of chip on his shoulder. He started wrestling late. I, I know if you look at his progression here at NC State, you know, he started slow and then he hit the ground running each year with improvements made in the off season. And last year was his breakthrough season. Um, I know he's he's excited to have that opportunity again. He was very disappointed uh, at the, the, what he was not able to accomplish last year. But – now, as we look back, I think it's it's helping us because of his drive and, and his willingness to make sure that it, that doesn't happen again this year. Um, but he is. He's he's worked extremely hard to technically get better. And something mocks one of those guys. Sometimes you got to hold him hold him back a little bit because he, he does train so hard and he he goes at such a high pace that we we uh, I, we, we focus in to make sure he keeps doing everything he needs to do in his part to put himself in a position to win a national title this year. And our final weight class, 285, you touched on it briefly, but we got a couple guys that are going to compete there. Redshirt junior Malik McDonald, he was an NCAA qualifier last year at 197. And you have senior Michael Boykin, who was actually an NCAA qualifier two years ago at 197. So both of these guys have made the jump to heavyweight. What competition is there between those two guys for the starting job? Yeah, that's, uh, you know, last Two years, it's been one of those where we've got we've had some close depth with each other. Um, I, I'm looking forward to see who separates himself, takes that spot. Uh, Malik won in a very close match. I think it was a stall call in the difference. So this weekend, hopefully with some outside competition, we can see who's better. But you know, they both have two different unique styles, so that's the luxury this year is we can mix and match depending on matchups. Um, that's a great thing about having some depth is you can. In dual meets, you can play that card a little bit. But at the end of the day, you know, I want to put out there who earns this spot. Um, and, they're, they, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll decide that as time goes on. But I, I do like the passion and the commitment that um, Malik McDonald put in this offseason to get bigger. And obviously Boykin's committed in, in the room and, and has been working a lot with Nick. And they've both been able to train with each other. So it's kind of, you know, that heavyweight's a little different on that island. And those guys... Yeah, you know, have to basically wrestle each other every day in the room, which makes it tough if you actually have to wrestle off. And I think that's why you saw in that wrestle off, it was basically um, came down to a stall call, evenly matched. And uh, it's it's hard for those guys. Wrestle offs at any weight, let alone heavyweight, when they're in there battling each other every day, going out in uh, competition and trying to wrestle off. Well, Pat, I think that puts a wrap on this episode. It was great to hear about the team. I know everybody is looking forward to this season and this weekend. You know, it's really exciting. The whole team will be up there, going to get a lot of matches, and you're going back to your home state, actually, yourself. Yes, always look forward to going up to upstate New York. Um, see a lot of people who grew up wrestling. That's where it all started. And then, uh, obviously, brother running a first-class event there, Journeyman Classic, and uh, the people that are connected to that, it's a first-class event and as well as the food that I get to see when I'm home uh, with my mom and dad. So I'm, I'm looking forward to all of that. Well, I hope you bring us some food back. Maybe at the next podcast we'll do a luncheon. Who knows? That'd be perfect. And I want to thank everybody for listening. This is your Pack Mentality Pop-Ins Podcast. Until next time, Wolfpack fans, go Pack! Mentality Poppins Podcast is produced by the Matt Talk Podcast Network. For more wrestling podcasts, go to matttalkonline.com.